Hi there folks, I hope you're doing well, and in this video I've got another treat for you. I'm going to show you some tools to write some better C++ code when you're working with multi-threaded programs. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I want to refresh and bring back an earlier video that you may have seen in this series. If you haven't, just to give a recap, what I've got here is my main program, and it's a program where I'm spawning multiple threads that are calling this shared value increment function. So here it is, and it's going to increment some global or shared value in our program one uh, value at a time and of course we need to remember to join all of our threads and then terminate our program so just to recap if i go ahead and try to compile this let's use g plus uh, plus standard c plus plus i like to use uh, new c plus plus this file is called data race which is a bit of a hint here the program and we need to link in the thread library and again, if I run this, you'll see some non-deterministic results, thus a data race. Now, how would we fix this? Well, if you recall, we need to uh, introduce some sort of lock and then protect our shared variable. So again, this is the benefit and the disadvantage of threads. The benefit with threads being we can do multiple things potentially at one time or work on some shared task. But the downside is if we're sharing data, we have to be careful with our order of operations when we're doing reads and writes. In other words, when we're just updating a value. Okay, so what do we have here to help us avoid writing this kind of code? I'm gonna go ahead and undo these changes and assume that we don't have any of these locks or know exactly what's going on. But luckily what we have are thread sanitizers in GCC, LLVM, uh, MSVC. Most compilers have these these days. And again, the idea is if I have a piece of memory here and I have multiple threads writing to it, I want to be able to know if these were two, say, read operations that took place, I'll indicate with R's here, that's probably okay. But if one of these operations was a uh, write operation, then we want to flag and sort of say, hey, this piece of memory is potentially corrupted, which would be this shared value here. Now, explaining exactly how to implement one of these sanitizers from scratch is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I would encourage you to go ahead and take a look. You might Google terms like shadow bytes, for example. And if you look for GCC or LLVM, the implementations have been talked about at various conference venues. So it's not beyond the scope of your learning. I just want to focus on using the tool for this video. Anyway, let's get to the point and show you the video. Uh, or rather the trick in the video, and it's to use these sanitizers. And again, there's a specific one for catching thread-related bugs that could happen, as well as if you notice in GCC, there's ones for handling address errors and, as well. And Clang supports many of these other flags, as does GCC. So let's go ahead and run this. So again, we know that this code is going to cause some sort of problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile it, but this time using the F sanitize thread flag here. G++ 17 uh, for my version that I'm using here, the database program, and everything that we did before. Except at the start I'm going to run f sanitize equals thread here. And I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it all in one line here. And let's go ahead and hit enter. So our program compiles just as it normally does. But what it's in fact doing again is it's going to instrument our program, that is insert other functions around potential function calls or places where we're reading and writing memory. Again, it might depend on the implementation a little bit how this tool is actually working, but uh, the idea is it's gonna be monitoring your memory accesses. So if I run prog here, let's see what happens. I'll make this a little bit bigger here. And you'll notice that I get a lot more than the shared value here. And in fact, let's go ahead and scroll up here and see what happens. Well, we're getting a lot of problems here. It has, in fact, detected a data race here. And it gets it from one of the threads that is executing, so thread T2 at this particular time. And each of our threads, when they're executing, remember they have their own logical execution uh, flow, we can see the sort of call stack here. So for one of our threads, T2, and for one of our other threads, T1 here. And they're both indicating that something at shared value increment is causing a problem here, where there might have been a read and a write at the same time. 
And eventually it will give us or report the error here if we look and say shared value is the culprit. That's the location which we have two threads accessing at one time. Uh, in particular, in this case, doing two uh, writes at the same time. Okay, so that's the result we get from our thread sanitizer, and then we know that we need to make our correction. I'm gonna go ahead and run this again, but this time using uh, Clang. And just to show you uh, on the thread sanitizer page for whatever the latest version of Clang is, you can always find out how to run this, and it'll show um, some examples for you. So let's go ahead and run this as well. And we'll recompile, rerun, and again, we'll get a similar output here. Now the output might be a little bit different. They're different tools. And in particular, this one has, again, detected data race. Now, if we want, we should probably also be compiling uh, this one in particular with the debugging symbols here. See if I can give us some better uh, symbol names here. And less question marks. Well, in this case, maybe not. But that could be an option to uh, add or, or what you should always be doing once you've found the uh, error here. So. In conclusion, I want to let you know that you have these very powerful tools available to you, both on GCC as demonstrated here, as well as the Clang compiler. And again, if you're using Visual Studio or any other tool, likely you have these with the same command flags that you could use. And maybe even in different languages that you're using, you might have some of these race detectors used. As always, use your tools and try to build in these tools into your build system if it allows going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and trouble debugging. So if you enjoyed this video, and maybe it'll save you in the future, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, and hopefully we'll see you in another video very, very soon. Take care, folks.